Before we start this video, I just wanted to remind you guys that I am not an expert. I am just a casual tarantula keeping hobbyist and I am doing this for fun. Everything in this video is my own opinion and I encourage you to share yours as well, even if it's different than mine. So yes, just a reminder, I am not an expert. I'm not an expert, I'm not. Hey everyone, I asked you guys on my Instagram if you wanted me to take some footage at the zoo today. The majority of you guys said yes, so I thought I would actually critique some of the tarantula enclosures. I thought it would be really fun if we went through their different enclosures and rated them a 1 to 5. A 5 being the best and a 1 being the worst. I will be talking about what I do like and what I don't like about each enclosure. <laughs> The first tarantula that we're gonna be talking about is the Mexican Red Knee. This is a Brachypilma smithy, and the enclosure looks pretty similar to their habitat in Mexico. However, it is hanging up at the very top. And keep in mind, this is a terrestrial spider. So it being this high from the ground is actually pretty dangerous. If it was to fall, it would be a very long way down, broken by some hard rocks. They do have a nice hide. They also have provided a full water dish in the back, so I do like both of those things. So this enclosure is probably similar to what it would be like in the wild. However, in captivity, there are things that we can do to prevent accidents, and this enclosure is not very safe. That is why I am giving it a two out of five, because there are many improvements that could be made. Next enclosure that I wanted to show is actually an Emperor Scorpions. I actually really like this enclosure. However, I did notice that it is a little dry and while they can tolerate some drier conditions, they're gonna probably like humid ones better considering where they come from. Between the lack of humidity and the fact that there is a rock in its water dish, I'm giving this enclosure a three out of five just because those are two things that I don't like about it. Next, we have another scorpion. This is one that I do actually personally keep. It is a flat rock scorpion. These are from Africa and they are desert dwellers. So what I did notice is that theirs is in a really weird position. I don't think I've ever seen mine hold its tail like that. And I also really rarely ever see mine. It's always hiding under a rock. So I was a little skeptical if it's actually alive. Honestly, I think it is actually on display and not alive, but I'm still gonna give this enclosure a five out of five because I think it is an appropriate enclosure for this species. Next up, we have a local tarantula. This is an Aphonopilma hensi. So these are really in Southern Missouri. I don't think they're really up here by St. Louis, but I mean, it's possible. But anyway, this enclosure is pretty nice. There's a big thing of water there. Um, I couldn't find the tarantula anywhere, but I'm sure it's in there somewhere. I like all of the plants and everything. I think it looks really nice. My only gripe is that the substrate isn't really something I would choose. Like it's kind of sandy. I would go more with Eco Earth, but it's not terrible. So other than not really liking the substrate, everything else seems pretty good. I mean, it is a little big, but that's fine. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Here we have a desert hairy scorpion, and this enclosure is really boring and it's hard to look into. There's only one hide right there, and then the rest is just kind of like this shallow sand and a water dish. I feel like it could probably use more stimulation than this, so I'm giving this a three out of five. I just feel like they could throw different things in there for it to climb on and it'd be more interesting. Here is a black widow, and as you see, they provided lots of branches for it to web to. It's made its little home up here on the top. But yeah, I don't really have anything bad to say about this one. It looks good, five out of five. Here we have the Gramostola porteri, or rosea, the Chilean rose hair tarantula, and come on, St. Louis Zoo. You are so much better than this enclosure. It sucks. First of all, there is so much unneeded height. I just don't really know what's going on with all that. And then if you look down below, there's like no substrate. Is that sand? I don't know, but I'm really confused. Like why does it not have any substrate? If they just added a good four inches of eco earth, it would be fine. So I just don't even know what's going on with this one. Kind of sucks. I'm giving it a one out of five. <laughs> 
Next up, we have a species that I actually don't keep right now. I've never had one, but this is a Davis pentaloris. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And this is actually a terrestrial tarantula. They do have a water dish and quite a lot for it to hide in. If you notice right over here in the corner is actually where it's made its little hide. Now, this is an opportunistic burrower, so the substrate that they have isn't the best. I mean, it looks like it's kind of some soil sand mix, but yeah, it definitely is gonna wanna dig more. So I'm gonna give this a three out of five because they have it set up arboreally and it just doesn't make sense to me. Here we see they have a T. Sturmy or the bird eating tarantula and these are really cool. I personally don't have one, but I do think that this enclosure is pretty appropriate. I don't like how they have racks in the water dish though and I don't like how little substrate that they have. I know that these guys do like to be kept a little bit more humid and the substrate did look decently damp though, so I will give them that. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this enclosure is like a four out of five for me. There's definitely improvements that could be made, but I think this is pretty ideal for this spider. Okay, I am really jealous that they have an H David Bowie. This is something that I've been wanting in my personal collection for a while. Anyway, this enclosure looks really cool. I can see it hiding right under that leaf up there and everything looks pretty good. I'm gonna give it a five out of five. So we have the P. Cambridgei, and this is a really amazing enclosure. There she is down there, and oh my gosh, I really like this enclosure. It's very tall, there's a lot for her to web to, there's substrate that can keep some humidity in there for her. I think that they did a really good job putting this enclosure together, and I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5 for sure. So that is all I critiqued. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Comment down below your opinions and stay tuned if you want to see other footage I took while I was there. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you are not and you want to be, and don't forget I have an Instagram that I use probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. I hope you guys enjoyed this adventure. I have another adventure coming up soon, so I will see you guys then.